heart center focused meditation versus third eye traditional meditation practices. And I think it's important that we discuss a little bit this issue because all of the meditations I'm going to be sharing and practicing through this challenge, through this seven day challenge and also um, in the future will always be centered in the heart center. And there's a really important reason for this. And I wanted to make a video about it and explain. Um, we've done a lot more scientific research now and there's also a lot of information about the evolution of the children that are being born in this time. And in heart math, for example, which is um, you know, the idea that heart coherence or the understanding or the heart brain, um, scientifically they have discovered that the electromagnetic field of the heart center, including its brain, because it actually has the same material, the same um, field as the, as the mind does, and it has been proven uh, to be a, like a stronger energetic base for the energy of creation and synchronicity and the new um, intuition source or the new, you know, before we would, we would focus our energy in the third eye and we would say, you know, like give me intuition as to, to be able to see. But the third eye is more limited in its energetic field and it can still be a source of intuition and awareness. But what has happened with the generations coming um, over the past 20 or 30 years, the children being born now in this time are being born with a more open heart center chakra. Um, from information that we have received from mentors and people that have downloaded important informa information from the universe, we have understood that now we have five chakra systems in the heart center, you know, including uh, more intuition, more connection, more ability to create, um, more ability to use the imagination faculty in the heart center. And now has become very important, especially for the people that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, like a little bit older than the children being born right now. It's important that we start expanding and opening more our heart center awareness because let me just put my camera down a little more here because I want my heart center to be in the video. Yeah, because <laughs> um, if we are not starting also to work on this connection, um, we're going to be kind of uh, left in the old energy and the old energy is not as capable of having abundance, creating using the imagination to create, having the connection of synchronicity within the heart, expanding our energy of love and our, and our energetic magnetic field. And I don't want to get into the scientific information in this video because if you just look up um, heart math or heart coherence, um, it all comes up on the internet. So I don't need to get into the actual scientific um, reasoning. I'm not very good at remembering all the details of the scientific facts better at the energy and as I have worked through the meditations on um, heart center awakening and heart center expansion and heart center creation um, abundance and um, also the man managing our energy of our body because what we want to do is we want to put our emotional body our heart center and our mental body in balance. And if we want to put these three energies into balance inside ourself, we also need a place where we can hold the emotional energy, our intimate erotic energy. And it's a very good balance between what is the higher um, vibrational frequency chakras and the lower though I don't like the word high and low because it, people still go back to it being the low dense and the bad or the taboo energy and the high spiritual, it's not. We have to get rid of those belief systems and we have to understand that anything that's in our body, in our energetic field, has to be pulled together. 
the earthy, erotic, and sexual energy in our body to be able to bring it up through the emotional body into the heart center and the descension of the higher spiritual energy, the masculine energy of our universe, our universal energy, and our denser, creative, more erotic, and more sexual female energy. And if we were to try to hold or bring that energy up to the third eye from our physical, emotional body, it would be extremely difficult to manage in the third eye, which has a much a smaller energetic field. So the third eye can, yeah, it can be blown open for vision, but it can't hold energetically or process the emotional problems and stress. Well, we can try to do it there, but we will end up with headaches, people who are still doing traditional med meditation practices and meditating in their third eye or having problems with migraines and headaches. And because the energy uh, they're trying to focus and concentrate there is not, um, not the energetic um, balance between the physical body and the spiritual body. And that balance is found right in the center of our body where we have the two chambers of the heart. And the two chambers of the heart represent our masculine and our feminine energy as well. Then we have the two um, sexual part of our organs. So it's either two ovaries or two testicles, if you're a guy or a girl. And then we have the two hemispheres of the brain. And this is where our energy flows. And the heart center is in the middle. So we have that uh, dense feminine emotional energy coming up through our sexual organs into our heart center and we have the dissension of our higher self into our animal body through our brain through the two hemispheres of our brain which is also the masculine and feminine channel of energy you know the creative and the survival you know the animal brain and the conscious brain the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. So that comes down as well into the heart center and it connects. And this video is hard to scientifically explain, but if you do just take a quick read about heart math or heart coherence, I think that will give the scientific mm, part of this. And the rest of it is practice and energetic understanding and intuition and taking also the information of our new mentors and our top, like, you know, Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza and some other mentors that we've had, like my mentor from my medical intuitive course, who had an extremely incredible vision as to what was happening with human evolution. And he said, Mel Brand said that the children that are being born now are being born with that five chakra system in the heart center and he called it the creative center the the wishing well so we have a place where we can have those desires and we have a place for that creation but it's not our like oh i want a chocolate bar type of wishing well it's a how do i create what my life mission is how do i connect that with the universal synchronicity and in our heart, we're able to open our energy field and we're able to connect and send out those visualizations from the imaginative faculty. If we drop the energy of our mental third eye, our mindset down into the heart center, it immediately creates this balance, this relaxation, this connection. And then you feel as your heart, as you learn to work with the energy of your heart, and your heart expands, you learn how to start creating this connection and every, every connection between your erotic energy and your higher self energy going into the heart center and sending out a connection into the universe is what helps what we want or what we need or what we desire or what we, we're, we're trying to create on a higher frequency. Those higher frequency wants and desires to serve, wants and desires to, to create these amazing meditations and make them make the videos on a much higher frequency that maybe with just me in my mind, I wouldn't be able to do, to create that connection with you who's listening. So you can actually feel the energetic template of what I'm saying 
and not just hear my words. I'm trying to actually send that energetic message field out. And then when you watch the video, you can receive the understanding of how to create that balance and have success in what you're trying to create. So many people want to serve in their lives and they have an idea what their mission is, but they're still trying to create on a very um, 3D world um, system. So it takes too long sometimes to create the abundance to be able to leave your job, your day-to-day -day job, and dedicate yourself to doing what you came here to do because you're still trying to create with the belief systems of, you know, I have to work hard, I have to save my money, I have to, um, you know, these traditional processes for abundance. And those are all very correct and true and need to be applied as well. Of course you have to work hard in life, but it's not hard work if you're dedicating your time. Like it's not, I can wake up every day and be so inspired and make these videos for you every single day, two videos a day, it doesn't matter because I feel so motivated and so connected. It's not even me that's doing it. I'm just basically just saying, you know, give me the guidance and show me what to, to do and create. And then as the ideas come, and more and more as I make the videos, I get more and more out of the 3D um, insecurities and uh, all this awareness of, you know, the camera and am I, am I smiling and am I speaking properly? Am I, you know, the, all of that kind of g goes away and I'm speaking directly with you and the people listening, it doesn't matter what time frame they're listening, whether it's in the same moment of me creating the video or whether it's in five minutes or whether it's in three years down the road, you're right here with me in this energetic connection because I'm creating a heart center connection with you and I'm helping you have an idea as to how to open up that energy system. And this, this idea, I want to talk a little bit more about the idea of meditation, now that I've explained why it's a heart center meditation. Um, we need to practice meditation. Eckhart Tolle doesn't need to practice meditation. Eckhart Tolle is a meditation walking around with two legs because he's able to keep his state of presence and he's talked about that he says okay you want to do a meditation okay let's do a meditation i'll do a meditation with you and so he just so he starts talking about what his experience of presence is he starts talking about how he feels and how he reflects the presence in his life and he starts telling you what it feels like to be present and that is his meditation. And one of the things I really want people to understand as well is that we're not awakened yet, like a mentor like Eckhart Tolle who had a, an awakening. Then we need to spend, like I've spent 30 years since I found Eckhart's book, The Power of Now. I was 23 years old. I think about 23 years old when I discovered his book. And I have been reading, listening, studying and applying it to my life for Okay, so for 27 years. And what happens is that you template yourself with his energy little by little. You listen to more audios, you get more ideas, you remember. But we need to practice meditation to get past that barrier of the mind and the thinking mind and become more aware of what's happening in our inner world and become more aware of that fact that we are the presence I'm the presence watching myself speak and make this video. And how can we become more connected through these practices? And we need to practice and we need to learn different skills in order to get to that place of awakening, like someone that Eckhart Tolle does. And so he does meditations online for people and he speaks of his experience of presence. And one of the things I want people to understand, like I don't, you know, close my eyes and sit in a yoga position and do the traditional uh, chakra system. No, I try to incorporate the meditation in every area of my life. So you need to learn to meditate while you're walking and you need to learn to meditate while you're driving. And you need to learn to be able to have that awareness of presence, no matter what you're doing, whether I'm making a video or whether I'm guiding a meditation. And if I'm guiding the meditation, 
I'm able to do the meditation with my eyes open and I'm able to look at the camera and share my energy with you. I am able to go back into my own energy and close my eyes for a moment and feel and I'm able to also keep the, the script of the idea I have for the meditation and not you know, lose it and go off too much like what happens sometimes with the videos when I get inspired and it's hard to keep the script of the video but you can do a meditation even when you're doing the simplest tasks and I often tell people who still are working jobs that they don't like um, there's a lot of people who are they're working you know um, boring things you know and we need also people in the world who are doing boring life things if everyone was doing um, you know their amazing you know, Vishen Lakiani from Mind Valley, you know, if that was everybody, <laughs> we'd have nobody to watch his videos, you know. So we need people to do jobs, work at a gas station, or and those jobs are just as important as creating an online platform for, for spirituality. Because as you're doing that job, as you're serving the gas or working as a cashier or working in a bank, you have an opportunity to be meditating and being present to work on being connected. So don't ever feel like you're not serving in this world, even if you're doing a job and you haven't got to that place where you're able to do what you came here to do yet. It's taken me my whole life, my whole life to get to this place. First, um, I just wanted to sing. I was a singer for many years and it was obvious to me that I wasn't gonna be this famous singer. So I just accepted that I'd be singing here in the Cancun area in the hotels and I did that for 23 years and I sang every day for three hours a day or sometimes six if I had a double double job and and yet I always visualized this holistic center here and the holistic hotel that I created I always visualized myself as a mentor giving those videos and doing meditations and helping people with this heart center awareness and connection how to create, how to have abundance, how to be more connected, how to have, how to do your beautiful life mission, little by little. And now, after creating the hotel, and maybe I've finished the 3D world part of things where, you know, the hotel is built, there's a place, there's a pool, there's a beach, there's a, you know, places for meditation and, and connection with nature. So now, it's time for me to work on this part of what I came here to do. And sometimes we start, we start um, just singing every day in a hotel for 23 years. So don't feel discouraged if it takes time. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience to get on a path. And I think it's frustrating and complicated for people who love to watch the teachings of Eckhart Tolle. They see him and they think, oh my goodness, you know, I want to create that level of awareness. And it's not something that's going to just happen overnight. It's... Like it's taken me 27 years of working, of applying. Um, I'm not still there yet. I struggle and I still have days, like I made some videos about my day and I still have, you know, dense human problems and I still go through my female cycles and sometimes I get a little crazy because I'm 49 so I'm having some pre-menopause things and I can get really upset or angry or just feel very sensitive and wanting to cry at times and those are the moments when you're living those real human moments with your body and your hormones and the challenges life puts you and those are the moments that bring you up to that next level where you're able to apply okay so I applied it even through the most difficult moments so now in the simple moments from the day to day I'm able to carry this this with me more and more and more and you find yourself more present and you find yourself more aware as each day goes by and you keep practicing but doing the meditations i wanted to create this seven day meditation challenge at this moment and talk a little bit about how i work on how i recommend people work on meditation because of the new energy because of the way we're evolving and the children are evolving we need to be able to incorporate that balance in our energy system and we need to also get away from this very strong you know masculine spiritual idea 
um, I believe in a balance between the masculine and feminine energy inside each person, not just the spiritual is just that uh, high vibrational universal energy in your body. Spiritual is the connection between what is your physical animal earthy body in balance in your heart center with the spirituality of the universe. So imagine if you can take the intelligence of artificial intelligence which we have now, human intelligence which we have from living our lives, and universal intelligence that we receive with our intuition and our connection through the heart center. Imagine the incredible advancement that humans are going to be able to have in the, in the next um, 50 years. It's going to be really quite incredible what we're going to be able to create and how we're going to be able to live our lives. And I think sometimes we're, we're very afraid right now with this transitioning. And one more little comment I want to share with everyone is, you know, it's very scary right now and a lot of people are feeling anxiety about, you know, the political situation in the world. And a lot of people are feeling anxiety um, with the issue about global warming and the environment. And, but I want everyone to consider something. What do you think con contaminates more the planet? You throwing a can, um, a pop can, out the window of your car into the jungle, which I see people do here. Unfortunately, it happens a lot here in Mexico. Just throw it out the window of the car. <laughs> ah! And it triggers something in me because, you know, growing up in Canada, it's like even in school you're taught not to litter. And it's interesting, you know, to have that tolerance and say, okay, not everyone was taught that as a child, so we've got to understand that people are going to do that. But then I ask myself, well, how have I contaminated the earth today with my negative thinking, with my anger, with my frustration? You know, what, what do you think contaminates the earth more? An aluminum can that you throw out the window of your car? God, hope that you don't do that, but anyways, if you do... Uh, or someone else does, or your lack of connection and awareness and presence. And I think that part of this spiritual journey and awakening of so many people on the earth right now is part of what's going to change the contamination on the planet because we're also contaminating the planet on an energetic field. And this has also been proved scientifically by the HeartMath Institute. So take a look at that if you're interested in the more scientific information. But every day that we smile and lighten our energy and expand our heart, and every day we become like a, like a vessel for, for channeling love and beautiful energy, is one more day that we're adding to the beautiful energy here on the planet, and we're not contaminating this earth with negative vibrations and negative thoughts and, and jealousy and, and hatred and all those other things. So practice, do the meditations with me. I'm going to keep them very informal. I'm doing it that way on purpose. I don't want it to be this, you know, super, I'm um, like, I'm going to sit on the beach in a Zen like yoga. This is not that kind of meditation. This is a meditation for you to take and walk through every day of your life to be able to be close to that meditative feeling and ability, even with your eyes open, even as you're washing the dishes or doing other things in your life. So good luck. And I would love to hear your thoughts on what contaminates the world more. That way I'll see whether or not people are watching to the end of the video. <laughs> what contaminates the earth more? Throwing an aluminum can out the window of your car or having a nasty energy and spreading that around around you with all the people around you. So very interesting. I'm not sure of the answer. I'm sure they both contaminate in a bad way. But I actually believe that if more and more people became more heart-centered and more awakened, um, you know, there wouldn't be as many people throwing cans out the window. <laughs> Anyways, have a great day and let me know your thoughts.